This is Scott, and what you're looking at here uh, is a KNB40 model 4011 that I, uh, is kind of a bit of a rescue. Bought it off of eBay uh, for like uh, $15, $20, something like that. And they said that it was missing a muffler and a spark plug, so basically you know that somebody probably got it from somebody who figured they can get something out of it on eBay. Um, it's not likely that I bought it from the original user. So I've been kind of going crazy collecting 4011s lately. Um, not that this motor here has any sentimental value, but just the 4011 is the first motor I ever had uh, way back in the mid-80s on an Eagle 63. Um, and it was a pretty good motor. It's not the most powerful thing in the world. It's, even in the, its day, it was using a little bit of outdated technology. It's lightweight, it was inexpensive, and um, as long as you didn't beat it on it too bad, it was pretty durable. Um, I think somebody attempted to test the durability of this motor. So when I looked inside of it, it looked like somebody just really beat the snot out of it. Maybe it got a lot of foreign or foreign uh, object in it. Uh, there were lots of little crevices and dents. Um, there's even under here, you probably can't see this, but in the heat sink there is a place where somebody basically chipped it away, I guess with a screwdriver. I mean, there's no way that that would happen in a wreck. I mean, it's just way too protected. So, um, this engine has been, has just been rebuilt. And I just call it like a fairly simple rebuild, um, nothing elaborate. Uh, I did replace the front and rear bearing with Boca bearings, uh, they're open bearings. I cleaned out the inside of the motor as best I could uh, with you know various brushes and uh, chemicals, but I did not like uh, put it in a crock pot, so it still does have a little bit of caster burn on it. Uh, it has a brand new piston ring from Makoa. And it has, I, I did uh, rehone the cylinder by hand uh, using like a brake hone, a medium grain brake hone. I basically honed it enough to take the lip off of the top of the cylinder. Um, that's basically formed where the ring travels and you kind of wear away the cylinder. And I put some crosshatch in it. And I also went over it with uh, 400 grain sandpaper to kind of smooth it out. So, the, uh, let me see, it's a dyke style ring, uh, so the ring is on top of the piston. Uh, you bend up, so you get your compression from the gas throwing the ring out as it compresses and you build power. Um, uh, what else? Uh, it's a steel liner, so it does make doing rebuilds easy. And again, I did run it um, just prior to this a few hours ago just to see if it would run. And surprisingly, it started on the second flip. I couldn't believe it. Um, I did run this thing uh, just a few seconds ago. part of the break in. Um, I ran it for about 11 to 12 ounces of fuel. Ran it very sloppy rich. It is about 50 degrees outside. So, oh wow, it's showing 45 here. 55 there, probably about 55 degrees. Uh, the fuel I am using is cool power and I added some caster to it. Uh, so it's got about four points of caster added so that be a total oil content of around 21%, uh, 4% uh, caster, 17% uh, oil, uh, probably clons, I'm guessing, some sort of synthetic. And I just wanted to run it really, really rich um, while it was going through its initial uh, ring seating phase. Um, I ran it uh, anywhere between 9,500 and uh, 10,300 RPM uh, with this uh, Master Airscrew 10x6 prop. So that is pretty rich. It was blowing a lot out. Um, my initial indication, or as far as how the engine ran, it seemed to run really good uh, with this rebuild, even though it's kind of amateurish. The only thing I tell you is, I think there's something right in this joint right here where it does leak out quite a bit of fuel. Um, I don't have a gasket in there. Uh, it never came with one, but you could make one, or I could make one, and you know whoever. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm doing with this motor at this time. Um, and probably seal that off. Um, some of the other motors I've had, uh, even though that they were strong runners, um, when you ran them rich, you'd get one heck of a nosebleed from right here where the oil was passing through. Uh, this one, when it ran rich, uh, 
it didn't have a nosebleed at all. It was really dry. Um, all the oil spraying out is coming from the exhaust. This particular model, or serial number, is 76438. Just in case uh, you ever, I ever talk about this motor online and you uh, look it up on eBay. So you'll see it is fueled up. And we will see what it takes to, you know, start this thing and how it runs. So I'm going to open up the carb just a little bit. Here we are. And I'm going to try to hold the camera in my hand here and start it. I want to have as much of this uncut as possible. Um, and here is one of the others. This guy is running strong right there, but he does have a nosebleed that i got to work on. Uh, the bearings are fine. Um, not exactly sure why it does. So let's actually I've got to unhook this. Whoop. And you can see we're getting ready to get fuel here really quick. And I have a fuel line that I really need to insert that I need to find. Uh, here it is. so I get muffler pressure. So it's going to feed in, I guess, uh, gravity feed. Oop. Let me open up my carb a little bit. Let me prime it. It does have strong compression. basically turn the engine upside down and fuel poured out and I have reconfigured the uh, height of my fuel tank to keep this from happening again.
smelling castor. Um, so I backed out of it uh, when I did that. And you could hear it tell like it just wanted to take off. So it's just not broken in yet. That ring is still seating. And you could tell uh, also it was running rich and it was what, 12,300, something like that. I'll take a look at the video. I can't remember myself. So we'll see if we can get better idle. sounded better um, turn that so maybe the carb can't close quite as much just a little bit will do it that might be too much but we'll see hmm, so you can see 12,600 um, that actually placed <laughs> with only two runs on it that um, puts it in the pack amongst uh, my other engines. I have one that will do, that will peak at 13,000 with this prop. Uh, I don't know what this one peaks at, but uh, I'm guessing it's right in that area, so um, that leads me to believe the health of this motor is pretty solid. So let's see what we got here. I don't know, I might need to raise the throttle some more, just for a start.
So I'm sucking air through the, through the line now, um, just too low on fuel. So I'm going to cut it right here, and I'm going to do just, uh, I'll probably take a picture of the maximum tack reading um, on this next run. So I'm just going to fuel it up just for one shot, and then I'm going to clean it out. Um, but it's, you know, it looks pretty respectable to me. And let's see how the compression feels. Feel that. And that's not on a cold engine where people like to test compression. That's a hot. Right at 175 degrees. It's cooling down quickly. But um, yeah, so I'm going to try to just do a peak speed test. I, I don't think it's near broken in yet um, just because of the way it's holding a needle setting. Because uh, you, you, you set it just barely so it's uh, four strokes and it breaks into two stroke and wants to take off. So I think it needs some uh, more time.